always got to hit the edge of this before I walk up on it. Cast number one. They got to be here. I've left them alone. Oh, yep. Nice. Fish number one on cast number one. He'll get out. There sure is a lot of snakes out here. Y'all see this right here? He's trying to get me. That doesn't make me feel good about fishing here today. Yep, there he is. Nice. It's funny. I get up here as far as I can. He ate it too. Little guy. I don't know how much longer they'll go for though. I've been going at it pretty hard for dip. Ooh, I had a bump for about two months now. There he is. Nice. Right there in the same spot. Nice little fish. Letting them go today. I already got enough. Get over there against the grass. Hey, y'all. This is probably the scariest fishing I've done in a while. Y'all can see these snakes are swimming around in every frame, and they are not scared to come check me out. This week, I'll talk about Romans chapter 2, continuing our journey through this book. So let's dive in. Paul starts this chapter off by telling us that we don't have the right to condemn or judge other people's sin. You may think you can condemn such people, but you are just as bad, and you have no excuse. When you say they are wicked and should be punished, you are condemning yourself. For you who judge others do these very same things. Romans 2, 1. He is highlighting the fact that we are all sinners at one point doing things that were not pleasing to God, so we can't judge someone based on laws that we are guilty of breaking ourselves. But because of Christ's love for us and Him dying on the cross, we have forgiveness from our sins through Him being raised from the dead, and Jesus offers salvation regardless of our past sins, so we should feel the same way, accepting all who call on Jesus' name regarding, regardless of their sins in the past. And when we are speaking to people that are lost, we cannot turn them away because they don't know any better. But whenever someone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. For the Lord is the Spirit, and wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So all of us who have had that veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. And the Lord, who is the Spirit, makes us more and more like Him as we are changed into His glorious image. 2 Corinthians three sixteen through 18 but if we are hypocritical and prejudge them, they may not turn to the Lord to have this veil removed. He makes it clear that God's judgment still remains for those who don't accept His Son, Jesus. He will give eternal life to those who keep on doing good, seeking after the glory and honor and immortality that God offers. But He will pour out His anger and wrath on those who live for themselves, who refuse to obey the truth and instead live lives of wickedness. Romans 2, 7-8. Paul writes that God will judge us based on his law, whether someone has heard it or not, or whether they have heard it and disobeyed it. He says people who belong to God demonstrate that God's law is written in their hearts, for their own conscience and thoughts either accuse them or tell them they are doing right. And this is the message I proclaim, that the day is coming when God through Christ Jesus will judge everyone's secret lives. Romans 2, 15-16 for this reason, we need Jesus to forgive us our sins, and we must allow His Spirit within us to change the way we live and treat others. Paul continues by saying how ignorant it is to keep living a sinful life after being made aware that it's wrong. We are called to go and make disciples, and we can't do this if we aren't living right. Paul is talking about the Jews who had the law at the time and said, Well then, if you teach others, why don't you teach yourself? You tell others not to steal, but do you steal? You say it is wrong to commit adultery, but do you commit adultery? You condemn idolatry, but do you use items stolen from pagan temples? You are so proud of knowing the law, but you dishonor God by breaking it. No wonder the scriptures say the Gentiles blaspheme the name of God because of you. Romans 2, 21-24 
How often do we hear people who are lost say Christians are hypocrites and judgmental and turn people away? I don't know about y'all, but I don't want anyone to blaspheme God because of me. That's terrifying. This is because we can all fall into the same trap that the Jews, Paul is referring to here, did. And this is why Paul started off the chapter by telling us that we are not to judge anyone. Paul ends the chapter saying we are not made right by simply following a few laws either. Paul uses circumcision as an example because it was the hot topic of the time, whether or not the new convert should be circumcised. The Jewish ceremony of circumcision has value only if you obey God's laws. But if you don't obey God's law, you are no better off than an uncircumcised Gentile. Romans 2.25 Paul is saying you can't judge someone who didn't go through that ceremony because you are guilty of breaking other laws. Circumcision, like other laws and traditions, don't make us right with God. He says we are made right with God through a change of heart produced by the Spirit. And a person with a changed heart seeks praise from God, not from people. Romans two twenty nine. And don't the people of this world seek praise from each other and not God? It's all over the radio, the TV, and in our schools. And we can fall into this look-at-me trap if we don't stay close to God, stay in His Word, and obey His commands. I hope this brought y'all some peace and comfort today, and that it might have given y'all something to work on this week to make you closer to Him. We will continue our journey through Romans next week. I hope you read ahead. If this is your first time hearing the Word and you have questions, please reach out. I'd love to answer them. Thanks for watching, and please stay tuned for more Fishing with a Mission.